Hey everyone, Steve here, and in this video, I'm taking a look at the Fight Stick Alpha for the PS4 and PS3, made by Mad Cats. I didn't realize they actually don't have their own logo right on the front of the box, which is an interesting choice. As you can see, this particular model has been co-branded with Street Fighter V, licensed by Capcom USA in 2016. I don't even know if they were doing any official support for the PS3 back in 2016, but it's good to know that it's there. On the box, Street Fighter V, Mad Cats, other European languages here, uh, Ah Mika, okay. <laughs> Top is the same as the bottom. And here is the functionality of this controller. A nice 9.8 foot or three meter cable, three-way switch for D-pad, left analog or right analog, controller lock buttons so you don't disqualify yourself, L1 and L2, because this is only a six button stick. So those buttons are up the top there. Official Street Fighter V artwork. And you can probably tell this isn't new or sealed. So let's just see what's inside. And there we are, an arcade stick, a bundle of wire, and then a nice manual. Decent quality looking USB cable. Taking a quick look at the manual. I guess this is pretty much it, this part. Fight stick alpha, lock unlock switch. Wow, it's pretty simple. Uh, it looks like everything that was on the box anyways. Not really gonna go into that. And here is the stick itself, quite small. The easiest thing I have on hand for reference is this Xbox One controller. So basically one and a third times the size of an Xbox One controller. There we are. So looking at it a bit closer, you have the red ball top with the joystick. Feels good. These buttons here don't feel amazing. They are probably just some cheap generic Sanwa clones with a bit of actuation force needed. So that's something to note. Mad Cat's logo up here, Street Fighter V down there, and that's as much branding as there is. Home, PS3 slash PS4 switch, lock and unlock, the switch for the directional input, and the rest is pretty self-explanatory. On the bottom, we have Mad Cats, model number 89180, operates via USB 5 volts. Good to go. I like the look of the bottom. It looks pretty interesting. Like, I guess who knows why they had to do this sort of tessellating triangles pattern. The cable is just going to come out here. There are no feet to support the arcade stick itself. There is this foam padding. And of course, we're going to take a look at it afterwards. In terms of the joystick, though, we've got a shaft cover here so the ball top doesn't just spin off. Uh, dust washer there. Hmm. It's quite light. It moves around the table quite a bit. So you're probably gonna have to anchor it there. And I guess what that's what these kind of inclines are for. So you can kind of do that. Oh yeah, feels good. So I've just plugged it into the PS4 and you have to press, I guess, the home button to have it be recognized. Everything seems nice and responsive. Okay, so I'm just gonna test this out on Street Fighter V. I don't have enough space to download the update for online mode, so I'm just gonna test it out in arcade mode. Trying to get a shot where I can show this logo while I'm playing, but I'm gonna cover it up with my hand anyway, so there's probably no point. You guys get the idea. It's actually interesting to me, the button spacing of this thing. They kind of feel far apart, to be honest. Um, we don't have a straight across layout. We've just got kind of the normal, I don't know what you'd call it, but angled layout here and then two straight across. The distance between the buttons and the joystick is nice. So I think it's perfectly fine. But yeah, the whole thing is a bit small. If you like space for your wrists or anything like that, you're not gonna have it here. And you can kind of brace the stick with your pinky like I did in that Hori Compact joystick video. Whoa. If I do this and I'm trying to do a hurricane kick or a tatsu, it's gonna lift the stick up. So I gotta weigh it down with my hand. Something to note. Overall, the controller feels all right. I'm trying to do the parry. <laughs> oh God, never mind. Feels good, not a very interesting controller to look at. I mean, it's all black and maybe you like that, but you know, all the buttons look the same. The red ball top is all right, I guess. Oh my God. <laughs> Okay, so I have been on a Tekken kick recently, so I'm gonna take this controller online and see how we go. Okay, yeah, the distance of these buttons is really, I guess getting to me is what you'd say. They are like just a tiny bit too far apart than I'm usually used to. Hmm, there's no touchpad button, so I'm not sure how that's gonna work. Maybe I should read the documentation, but yeah, that means I can't do any of the uh, other options. As in like turn rage on or turn counter hits on down here. I always think I'm gonna lose because uh, 
whenever I get to like the fourth rank, I am exposed for the fraud and unknowledgeable Tekken player that I am. So, ooh, okay. This guy's only a third Dan. Hopefully it's not too bad. 304 wins, third Dan, man. What the hell, is that horror? <laughs> Oh, jeez. Ah! Go on. Gotta be honest, this guy's not very good. <laughs> ah! So that'll be it for the playtesting. Now let's open this stick up. Okay, so I've got the stick propped up and I'm gonna undo all the screws on the bottom here. Okay, so I had a bit of trouble finding a long enough screwdriver to get down into the screw holes, but anyways. Hopefully this just comes off easily, or if I've left something in. Okay, all six screws are out, but it still isn't coming apart, so maybe you just need to do a little bit of prying. I think there's a hidden screw here. Yes. Under this sticker, there is a hidden screw. That is sneaky. Yeah. <laughs> okay, the hidden screw wasn't up here, it was down here. Sneaky, sneaky mad cats. Ah, there we are. Okay, let's see what's inside. Interesting. Okay, so tying the two halves of the case together is the uh, USB cable, which was just tied around the post here. Um, and that's kind of held in place with a grommet up the top here, so it's not that super easy to remove, but that's okay. Let's just split it open for now. Got a nice square restrictor gate here, the main PCB with a glove top. All the buttons have a connector here, which is good and the, uh, I suppose, JLF clone here for the joystick. These buttons should pop out. They are soldered in to the wires and covered in, I guess that's glue or epoxy or something. You've got a breakout board at the top here for all the other functions, also going to different parts of the board. These aren't actually labeled. In terms of the board itself, you can see the uh, connections to the breakout board aren't labeled, which is kind of crappy, but whatever. In this connector for the main six buttons, they are labeled, which is awesome. And they do have diodes there. And then we've got our joystick connector there, which yes, mounts with a very standard looking JLF clone style mount. And there's some sort of red epoxy on the screws here as well, which is an interesting choice. There's just a lot of, I guess, cost cutting and part securing measures going on here. And that part there with VBUS and data in, data out, ground and shield is the USB cable. So I definitely think you can mod it quite easily if you're just going to connect your own buttons. You just have to desolder these or remove them. Then you have to unscrew this joystick here, which is interesting. I might give that a go now, see where I go. Okay, so I unplugged the joystick connector to the main board and undid all the mounting screws for the joystick itself. That did have some weird red epoxy on it. I really don't know why they would have done that. It's not like it's not secure if you screw it in. But anyways, this should just come out. But of course the joystick, oh, the ball top is still connected. So let me just fix that. Put your flat head in the bottom. Then just twist. Okay, so after shaving quite a bit of metal off this bottom of this joystick shaft, I have removed the bolt top and dust washer and this whole joystick has come out. It looks like the joystick shaft cover is actually attached to the uh, joystick shaft itself. So I'm just gonna keep all of this joystick together. Okay, so the joystick's out. Whoa, are there two parts to this? <laughs> I don't even know where this came from, this extra washer. What is that for? Weird, yeah, there are two dust washers. Maybe one goes on the bottom of the stick here. Interesting design. I really don't know why they would do that. So I'll set this off to the side. I'm probably gonna leave the PCB in here, but I wanna remove the buttons. I'm really not sure the best way to do this. I might end up rewiring completely new cable or else we can do is cut the wires off the buttons, which is a bit more destructive, but if you're not gonna use these anyways, then there's really no need to keep them there or to keep them soldered at least. So let's just cut them off. And I don't know if you can see this, but they have daisy chained all the black grounds for all the buttons. And there's only one ground here at the very end. So I've just finished cutting off all the wires that were soldered to these buttons from the PCB. Now I'm going to use my little spudger here to help me pop the buttons out. Hopefully there's nothing weird going on there. Oh, there we are. One button gone.
Oh my god, finally. I don't know why it was so hard. Maybe I'm just really crap at doing this, but I've got all the buttons out and a lot of nice plastic dust with them. So what have we got left? We've got the top and bottom case still held together because of this uh, USB cable grommet over here. Uh, they're like that. We've got a bunch of loose epoxy that have, has been chipped off. I'm gonna shake this all out so I can vacuum it later. Got these screws with these epoxy or these plastic support posts that were holding the joystick in. And we've got bits of daisy chain ground wire. So again, with more epoxy. I don't know why they went crazy with the epoxy here, but it is a little annoying. <laughs> so hopefully you can see all this plastic junk that I have to now get rid of. <laughs> but anyways, got some nice buttons out of it. Not very interesting. They kind of remind me of those cheap buttons I got on that AliExpress Neo Geo controller. It's easy to identify which screws were used for screwing the joystick in and which ones were for uh, holding the case together because these ones don't have red epoxy all over them. Okay, so at the end of this teardown, what do we have? We have six action buttons. We have the six screws that held in this joystick into place. The six screws that hold the case together, which I'm gonna put back. And then we have the fight stick alpha case itself. So no buttons, no joystick. I have kept all the connectors in it, except for the one connected to the joystick because that can be replaced entirely, I reckon. Nice little screw posts here for modding later. I'm definitely wanna mod this up and just, you know, turn it into my own thing because there are probably a million of these out there anyways. So yeah, like a lot of my other recent videos, this is just part one. We'll be seeing this guy in one form or another soon enough. So that'll do it for now. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions about this joystick, let me know down in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer as much as I can. If you enjoyed the video, it would be great if you could like it. And if you haven't already, I'd love it if you could subscribe to my channel and be sure to check out all the other videos there because there's a lot more to see. Thanks again. See ya.